Everyone ready for the big secret build that I have? Here it comes! The long anticipated custom motorized UCS set number 10225 LEGO R2D2. I've been planning to do this for a few years now, ever since I built the set. But it did cost a lot of money to motorize them. However, this was a project that I surely enjoyed working on. I was able to locate a digital designer file in order to build this set. However, when I started building it, I realized that the file was not quite complete. It was incomplete. There was stuff that was just not right in the file and I decided to contact the person who did the file and that person told me that they had substituted parts in for parts that were not available in the LEGO Digital Designer program in order to simulate some other parts. So it became really confusing. Um, I did not strip down my R2-D2 UCS unit that I had built uh, as the original set and that became an issue too. It was almost easier to rebuild him right from the ground up or from the, the base right up. Um, trying to rebuild him in section by section uh, was not fun. With some modifications I was able to get it done and it turned out fairly well and I'm going to describe to you now how I kind of did things. You notice that the feet are exactly one brick higher. This is to accommodate the L motors which are at the bottom of the feet. And I'll show you those in a little bit. You can clearly see on the back here uh, the two infrared receivers as well as the battery pack showing through the hole in the back. The hole in the back is so that we can turn the battery pack on and off. I've actually modified the inside of that as well uh, from the LEGO designer um, file because it was originally uh, hard pinned right in and um, you'd have to almost strip it apart to get it out just to change the battery so I made it very easy to do that. You might notice the odd red or blue brick in there that shouldn't be where it should be white um, however that's all I had at the moment so that's what I used uh, you know R2 is getting up in age so his parts are being replaced with whatever color is available now you notice down on his foot you can see a Technic axle there um, that's where from the wheel that actually drives him back and forth you can see it moving there um, in the designer file it is not coming through to that side so there is no support in it this is one of the modifications I made you definitely need support on that need that axle as straight on the horizontal as possible there are only two wheels one in the left foot and one in the right foot that drives the R2 unit there is none in the middle leg whatsoever in the middle leg in the um, set version it is an up and down leg so you can move him up and down and um, store it up in the body in this it had to be a stationary leg you wouldn't want it moving anyway because if it was moving it could collapse on you as you can see also in the front of our two unit there we have a blue and red LED these are the power function lights um, just stuck in behind a, a translucent uh, blue round stud and a square red stud in a uh, one by one Technic a brick that has the hole in it that will hold the light. And this is just a picture of the instructions for the 10225 UCS R2D2 as he is in his original state. As you can notice, the height of the feet is one brick taller. Taking his skin up the front, you can see where the translucent blue and red power function lights are in the middle of the unit. We'll scan up a little bit higher and we'll get to the head and we'll show you now where the motor is attached to the battery box using the Technic beams and plates. On the right side you'll notice some white bricks and some yellow brick there. Uh, that's just to keep the uh, motor steady in the middle. I wanted it to be sturdy enough so I could take it in and out to be able to change the batteries in the unit at any time, especially at a LEGO show or convention type thing and R2's head just sits down as it would normally uh, on that pin and it easily comes right off. Okay so I'm going to dive a little deeper into the guts of R2 here. We're just going to tilt them up a little bit and you can see how the battery box and everything just fits inside there. It was actually quite clever on how I did this. It was simple but yet quite effective. 
And I really like how this turned out. So now I'm going to tilt this up a little bit and I'm going to show you uh, some more of the inside in there of how the battery box and that's connected. You see the two gray terminals connected to the battery box. That is for the IR receivers in the rear of the R2 unit. And the motors are connected to the two separate channels on each receiver down below. Uh, right, showing right there in the back um, for the appropriate um, actions. The bottom one being channel one, I use for the motors. The top IR receiver, I used uh, the first channel on that for the lights, and the second channel um, being for the head motor. Now, just quickly showing the remotes here. That one there would be for the lights uh, and stop button, and that's for his head and the stop button. Uh, I want to control over that. The second remote on the right is used for his left leg there, forward and backwards. And this one's used forward and backwards for his right leg. In conjunction, you can move them either way to make him turn left or right. So, looking at his feet here, you can see the one brick height difference in the front in the middle leg there and on the other two legs as well. Now I'm just going to turn them on his back so you can see the uh, motors on the bottom. They're the L motors, uh, power functions L motors. Um, and then it goes up to an axle, to a worm gear, and then um, you'll see the um, wheels there with the little black gear next to it. So I have like a double wheel uh, width and um, the black gear on the axle from side to side sitting on top of the worm gear. That's what drives the legs forward and backwards. Okay, more or less uh, more of a bottom view there. Trying to show up uh, through the uh, belly of the beast and uh, you can see where the power functions motors are attached to the bottom IR receiver right there. Alright, on the front of R2 you can see the two doors here that open up the left and the right and I'm going to show you here this is where I have the power functions lights attached one there and one there on the left side to the translucent blue and the translucent red uh, stud and it just comes through from the uh, IR receiver the second one up top um, this little gizmo here the blade that comes in and out uh, has trouble opening up and coming out um, with those uh, LEDs on so I might modify that so that that can open up and come out um, however it's okay for now I usually don't open those doors up because they are rather hard to open and close so we'll just leave them closed for the main time with the LED in there um, it looks pretty neat with the LED that comes on at the different times as well so and being on a separate channel it looks really cool rather than just popping on when the head is spinning or it's moving Spinning them around, you can see the IR receivers in the back with the wires coming down to the motors in the feet. Just uh, loops up around and comes down through uh, where I have it, uh, the uh, adjustable feet, I guess you could say, attached uh, through the beams uh, with the pins in the feet. Uh, just to keep the wires out of the way so that they don't get uh, pinched or anything and it fits quite nicely. And that's why they are attached to the lower IR receiver. This unit here, the uh, parts I had to build them just a slightly different, uh, had turned them around and back side up so that the uh, blue pins would fit on the feet. That open hole up there, which I just pointed to and I'm showing you now, that is where the power switch is on the battery pack and just use a pen or something to get in there and uh, turn it on and off uh, to give you your power to the inside of the unit. All right, let's have a look on how I have this top assembled here with the motor and the battery unit. It's a pretty straightforward mess, actually. Um, just unclip that there. That's to the IR receivers, which the motors are hooked up to. Uh, just a Technic beam pinned on the bottom of the battery box, and it sits on the bricks on side the uh, inside the R2 unit. Um, and then a few beams up top, which connect the motor uh, onto that. And uh, off to the left-hand side, I have a couple beams uh, coming out from the R2 unit with the motor bottom sitting on it just for stability purposes. So we tilt them up here and just look down inside and of course once again you see how empty it is uh, just showing uh, some bricks there that the uh, motor hangs on to um, to give us stability on that um, left side there and the battery pack sits down on the right across the two Technic beams across the bottom of R2. 
I'm going to uh, tilt R2 here a little bit so that we can uh, attach the battery box to the uh, motors and IR receivers. Actually, it's just the IR receivers because the motors are attached to the IR receivers. So the two IR receivers there are piggybacked and uh, just wrapped around one another there coming out the top. So we're going to uh, take that and attach that to the battery box and insert that back into the body of R2. So here we go, attaching in the... And we get that power functions connected back up to the battery box there. And then we're putting the whole uh, modular section inside here. I have a little trouble there with the bricks popping off. They do that, but that's okay. It keeps everything steady on that left side so the motor doesn't uh, jiggle around. So, after getting this all situated in here, you know, uh, R2 can't be R2 if he doesn't have his dome. And... Uh, he looks more like R2 now, and of course he's able to swing around on that. On to the handheld remotes, we have the large remote and the small remote. On the first channel there, we are going to use it for lights, and the stop button just turns it off, which is the red button. And on the next channel, we have the head, which we control because it's it's got control and stop. Uh, the, the smaller remote that would control his left leg uh, forward and backward and on the right side his right leg forward and backward. If we make any combination thereof uh, we can turn him sort of side to side left to right as you know one wheel goes backwards and one wheel goes forward. They are set for channels 1 and 2 like the infrared receivers are. Uh, until next time I'm Freddy from Two Loose Bricks and remember if you can dream it you can build it. I, I would really appreciate it if you would like Comment down below and subscribe to my channel so I can bring you many more great reviews, mocks, hauls, builds, tutorials, and other wonderful videos.